Father, we come now just to say thank you. We honor you for who you are. Now, God, we ask that you bless us, bless this word. As we're speaking, God, cause us to hear what you're saying and to say what you say. And we trust you for it now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 While you are sleeping. Uh, life has a way of coming at us unexpectedly. And in, in those times, we become somewhat affected and sometimes infected by what we're going through. Um, the antidote for some of that really is for us to change what God tries to do is to kind of change the scent of our nature. And sometimes in order for him to do that, we have to pause and we have to reset and we have to step away for a moment so that God can do some things in us. Um, for many of us, we have allowed circumstances and situations and people to sometimes affect our spiritual alignment. Yes. And, and so when that happens, we find ourselves in places where we're maladjusted or we're off-centered or out of sync or off-balance. Or to be honest, we just off. That's right. You know, come on. You know when you are. And I know when I'm off. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and so we find ourselves kind of off because of the things that are going on around us. But in, in the midst of that, if you're not careful, you'll find yourself doing things habitually so much so until you rationalize what you're doing, even when you know that it's not okay. Uh, um, we find ourselves in places, let me give you an example, we'll find ourselves in places where we accept hurt from people over and over again and justify it as that's the way they were brought up or or, or they don't know any better or they don't have anyone else but me or, or they've been rejected by so many others. So I have to take that. As women, we take stuff that we don't always have to take and we make excuses for it. But God said, it's time now to pause and, and, and to reset. Uh, some of us are stuck by a past season of mistakes, so much so that we can't even embrace God's forgiveness in the new season that he's trying to push us into. And God said, I brought you here to cause you to pause. And, and so in this text, what we see is Abram, God told him that he had an inheritance that was coming to him, but he needed to make a sacrifice. He needed to sacrifice a heifer, a she goat, a ram, a turtle, a dove, and a pigeon. And the Bible shows us that Abram, he obeyed and in verse Verse 11, um, the fowls came down to eat and uh, to try and devour his sacrifice. And what I saw in that text is that's how the enemy does with us. Because what he tries to do is, in the midst of us uh, making sacrifice, what the enemy tries to do is take our sacrifice by binding our praise or, or by messing with our finances or by causing our minds to be so overwhelmed or, or making our, our bodies become afflicted. And, and so uh, what the enemy tries to do is manipulate our worship and, and keep us from entering into the presence of the Lord. But God said, I'm calling you to be like Abram in this season and to drive the enemy away at all costs. Hallelujah. I had to bring you, hallelujah, here to refresh you and revive you and strengthen you because some of the things that the enemy has tried to do have caused you to be drained so much so that you you don't have the energy anymore to fight. But God said, I'm going to put you in a place of sleep. I'm going to put you in a place of rest. Hallelujah. That will call, oh Jesus, that will cause you to be strengthened, to go back to the battlefield. Hallelujah to Jesus. And do what God has called you to do. Hallelujah. Uh, we have to be like Abram was in this text where what he did was he began to fan the budgets off of uh, his sacrifice, hallelujah. And we got to do that because our sacrifice, uh, it gives us access to God. Uh, our sacrifice really is the key to our inheritance. Uh, it becomes the key to our blessing. Uh, but the Bible shows us in verse 12 that God causes Abram to pause yeah, yeah, yeah. by allowing him to go to sleep. Yeah. And the scripture says he went into a deep sleep. And so I looked at that and, you know, the teacher and me, I asked questions. Y'all know me, I'll ask questions. And Sister Patty, I'll ask questions. So, and so I said, okay, why would God allow Abram mm -hmm. to go to sleep when the enemy was trying to devour his sacrifice? Oh, yeah. It seems to me like that would be the time when you need to be real alert. 
so that you can continue to fan and, and you know keep him off and stuff. I, I asked the question, why would he be allowed to sleep when the enemy was trying to fight him for his inheritance? And, and so I, I said, okay, let me look at this a little deeper. Well, when you look up the word uh, sleep by definition, what it really means is this. Um, the, the word sleep simply means this. It, it is an in a state of inactivity. Yes. It is natural. Yes. It is a regular reoccurring condition for the body and mind in which there is little or no conscious thought or voluntary movement. Mm. So why would God allow Abram to sleep at this time? My God. Well, he allowed him to sleep because what he was trying to do was to bring him into a place of rest in order to isolate Abram's mind from the things that were going on around him and to bring him into a place where all he could see and all he could hear was God. Uh, the twist to this is this, that while he was sleeping, hallelujah, God had his attention and could begin to do some things in him and, and for him. God is saying the same thing to us today. The warfare has been intense for many of us, and the enemy has been attacking some of us, hallelujah, so much so until we haven't been able to see clearly. We can't even focus some days, hallelujah. It takes every bit of strength for some of us to get out of the bed in the morning, hallelujah, Jesus. And so what God says is, uh, I, I see you, and for many of you, you have been sometimes in what felt like a fight for your life, hallelujah, and you you become so worn out and your strength, hallelujah, felt like it was failing you. But God says uh, in this season, even when you think your faith is being challenged, uh, I'm getting ready to put you to sleep, hallelujah. Because in the middle of that, hallelujah, I'm getting ready to do something like I've never done for you before, hallelujah. But you got to be in a place where you can receive, oh Jesus, uh, where you won't fight what I'm getting ready to do for you. But you just stay there, hallelujah, and let me do what I know. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah to Jesus. Many of us wonder why God brought us here this weekend. God had to bring us to this retreat to put us in a place of rest in order that he might deal with the fatigue of your soul. Hallelujah to Jesus. And I'm telling you, that's deep, hallelujah. That's deep right there, sis. That is deep, hallelujah. Come on. Because when your soul is tired, oh, When your soul is tired, hallelujah. I'm coming to church every Sunday, but I'm tired. I'm singing on the choir, but I'm tired. I'm doing praise and worship, but I'm tired. I'm preaching the oh Jesus. But hallelujah to Jesus. God said, I pulled you away so that I can begin to deal with the fatigue of your soul. God had to take you off the battlefield just for a moment so that he can nourish your spirit so that you can be strengthened. And for some of us, hallelujah, we didn't realize it, but he sent us here to pause so that he can revive us and refresh us and replenish us. But God wants you to know this, that while you are sleeping, God is about to put you in a place of peace. Hallelujah, Jesus, because he's going to deal with your enemy. How do I know? Well, the text says, while Abram was sleeping, he was in a state of pause. And that brought him into a state of peace. Yeah. No longer did he have to fight right. uh, the fowls for his sacrifice because God had already dealt with the enemy for him. Hallelujah. For some of us, the enemy has been all around us and trying to chain us through anxiety and stress and worry and frustration and depression and grief. Hallelujah to Jesus. But God said, while you're in a place of pause, while you are sleeping, oh Jesus, while you're in a place where I can begin to speak to you, I'm going to put you in a place of peace and I'm going to deal with the enemy enemies that have been warring with your mind. Hallelujah. I'm going to deal with the stuff that's been fighting against you. I'm going to deal with the stuff that's been trying to deplete you of your strength. I'm going to deal with the stuff, hallelujah, that had you in a place where you were ready to give up. I'm going to deal with the, oh Jesus, I'm going to deal with the stuff, hallelujah, that made you wonder, God, where are you? I don't see you. I don't feel you. I don't understand. Oh, hallelujah. 
hallelujah. God says, I'm getting ready to put you in a place, hallelujah, of pause, hallelujah, in a place of sleep, hallelujah, where I can begin to deal with you. Hallelujah to Jesus. The other thing that I saw here is this, that while you are sleeping, God says, I'm taking out of you what somebody else needs to live. In this text, God promised Abram that there was a seed that was coming out of him that would be too great to number. They would be like the stars is what the scripture text says. Genesis 22, 21 and 22 said it describes the story of how God put Adam to sleep and took one of his ribs and formed Eve using Adam's rib. And, and so Eve lived because Adam existed. Eve lived because Adam existed. He had what she needed to live. Oh, Jesus. He had what she needed to live. And so God is saying the same for us. He's taking out of you what someone else needs to live. That's why he had to bring you here, hallelujah, this weekend, because there's some stuff you got to leave here, hallelujah, because he's going to pull some stuff back in you that when you go home, somebody else is going to need what you got. <laughs> You didn't just come to this retreat for yourself in case you thought you did. I just came to tell you it wasn't just about you. God said, I had somebody else that's assigned to you. That hallelujah, whatever you get from this, you won't be strengthened to help them. Oh God, hallelujah to Jesus. But God is taking out of you something that will not only cause somebody else to live, but it will also bless you. Hallelujah. But he has to do it while you are sleeping. And this is what's interesting because for God to take it out of you. Think about him taking the rib from Adam. Hallelujah. This really was major surgery. Hallelujah. And so if God had cut on Adam while he was fully woke. Hallelujah. Think about a surgery. Hallelujah. The shock of it could have physically killed him. Hallelujah. If God cuts on you while you're fully conscious. Hallelujah. The shock of it could kill you in the state that you owe Jesus. And so the intensity. Hallelujah. Of the initial pain might be too great, hallelujah, it might be too severe, and so God does it while you're in a place of rest, he does, oh Jesus, he does it, hallelujah, so that by the time you become alert, by the time you become conscious, guess what, your healing is already done. Anybody ever had surgery? Believe it or not, at the moment they shut you back up from the surgery, your healing has already begun. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Acts 20 and verse 9, it talks about a man named Eucharist. And he was in a deep sleep. And the Bible says that in the middle of the sleep, he died while Paul was preaching. Hallelujah. Right in that place. And Paul went over to him and fell on him and embraced him. And the life came back into him man's body and so uh, what that showed me is this uh, Paul was so full of the presence of the Lord uh, that it brought a resurrection uh, to the man that was in a deep sleep Hallelujah. God said just like this man uh, somebody needs to be revived uh, somebody's life needs to be restored uh, and God's going to use what's inside of you uh, to do this hallelujah the Bible says greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world and this season in this hour, God says I'm getting ready to do some things in you like I've never done before but I can only do it while you are sleeping. While you're sleeping, God says I'm going to make covenant with you. In this text while Abram was sleeping, God made a covenant with him and he made a promise to him. He promised that not only would his seed be too numerous to count, numerous to count but he promised him that they, they, would, be in the heart, they would inherit the land, hallelujah, and, and it will be the land of Canaan, hallelujah. In Job 33, the Bible shows us that he puts Job in a deep sleep. And he says that while he is sleeping, God begins to unveil his purpose and begins to instruct him. In the book of Daniel chapter 8, hallelujah, God puts Daniel in a deep sleep to make covenant with him, to show him his divine purpose, to unfold the vision. God is saying to us that while you are sleeping, I'm making covenant with you. In other words, that's what he meant by no weapon that is formed against 
makes you shall prosper. That's what he meant when he said, I will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. Hallelujah to Jesus. That's why we can recite and we can quote that no good thing from God will hold from those that love him and stand up right before him. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered out of them all. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard against him. We've been made in door for a night, but joy coming in the morning. God says, I made a covenant with you. Hallelujah to Jesus. And I'm doing it, hallelujah, right while you're in a place of rest. While, hallelujah, I have your attention because this is the place where I'm getting ready to birth everything that I promised you. Hallelujah. And it's coming forth in this season. God is saying that while you're sleeping, I'm taking you out of the prisons of your mind. Hallelujah. I'm taking you out of the fight. Hallelujah. And I'm calling you to be in a place of rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. That I may not only revive your spirit, but I may revive your soul. God says in the middle of your sleeping, now free your mind from the warfare of the enemy. Hallelujah to Jesus. While you're sleeping, I'm encamping angels around you to protect you from the enemy. While you are sleeping, I'm going to answer your prayers. Hallelujah. While you're sleeping, God says, I'm taking out of you what somebody else needs to live. Hallelujah. While you are sleeping, hallelujah, I'm going to strengthen you. Hallelujah. I'm going to deal with you in a way. Hallelujah. Like I've never dealt with you before. God says, while you are sleeping, I'm going to make some changes in your life. Hallelujah. In the middle of your rest, in the middle of your cause, God says, hallelujah, I'm going to make fulfilled destiny and purpose in you. But guess what? I got to do it while you are sleeping so you won't hinder the process. I got to do it while you are resting so the enemy won't distract you and cause you to lose your inheritance. I got to do it, hallelujah, while you're in the Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where nobody else, hallelujah, can mess up what I'm getting ready to do for you. How many of you have ever watched the movie while you were sleeping? Mm -hmm. If you haven't watched it, go back. 1999, I believe it is. 99, maybe 96. But anyway, while you're sleeping, it's a really good movie. Um, I don't want to spoil it for you, but anyway, I, I'm, I'm going to have to tell you what I'm saying, so I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to have to do it, BFF. But anyway, and, and so while you are sleeping uh, uh, is a movie where this man, he is in New York and he is one of the, um, he works the train station, he works the, he takes the tickets at the train station and um, he has this accident where he becomes unconscious, he falls and he becomes unconscious and I think it's Sandra Bullock, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, Sandra Bullock, she, she sees him and um, she helps to revive him and when he awakens, he winds up in a coma and has to work. When he awakens, um, she tells his family, actually no, she's the one that works there, she's the one that works at the train station, she tells his family that she's his fiance. Mm -hmm. okay. And so they all believe her. They kind of buy into the process. And so when he wakes up, he doesn't know anybody. He has amnesia. And so she tells him that she's his fiance. And, and, and so he believes it. And, and then the process uh, was happening. Um, she comes into this place where she starts to feel really bad because eventually um, she falls in love with his brother. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so somebody said, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so she falls in love with his brother, and so she's trying to figure out how do I come out of this because his family has now embraced her, they love her, and, and they even say, wow, she doesn't look like she would be a match for him because he, he's kind of standoffish, he's kind of arrogant, she's fun, she's loving and all that. And, and so uh, by the end of the movie, she, she comes to telling the truth, and um, the, the brother that she's in love with, they eventually get together. Um, my point for even giving you the backdrop of that movie is this. In the middle of while he was sleeping, the, the, the guy that was in a coma, he, become, he comes into a whole different personality change because of Sandra Bullock. And so in the middle of 
him being in a place of rest or coma or pause, um, something happens. He's transformed. And, and, and so the connection is, uh, for many of us, while we are here this weekend, I believe God's getting ready to transform some of us. Uh, God's getting ready to shift some of us. He's getting ready to make some changes in, in us. And God said that there's some things that we've been seeking, but he can only do it while we're in a place of pause, while we're in a place of rest. Um, because uh, what he's been trying to do is get us to take our hands off it. He's been trying to get us to stop worrying about it. He's been trying to get us to let him do it. But, you know, us, when it doesn't happen fast enough, we start trying to put our little spin on it. Hallelujah. And try to do it our way. You know how we do it. And, and, and so, and we mess it up bad. Ask Sally. We mess it up bad. Hallelujah. And, and, and so, because, you know, we think we think we got it. You know, he's not moving fast enough for sure. So we got to, you know, we got to do a little bit more. But God says, I'm going to put you in a place where you can't do nothing but trust him. I'm gonna put you in a place where uh, where you can't do nothing but seek me, where you can't do nothing but rely upon me, where you can't do nothing but but uh, just pray and lay in my presence because ultimately that's where the change is gonna come. Ultimately that's where your answer is gonna come. Ultimately that's where I'm gonna ready to shift where you are so that you can go to where I need you to be. So I said while you're sleeping this weekend, I'm gonna do some things in you like I've never done before. Simply because it's time. Simply because this is the season in which it's time for you to move to the next place. It's time for you to go to where I said you ought to go. And see, what the enemy has tried to do is keep you in a place where, you know, when you haven't been in a car and you know how neutral works, hallelujah, when you really don't go forward and you don't go backwards, hallelujah, you just kind of sit there and you kind of island if you're not on like a little hill or ramp. And God says, so for many of us, that's where we've been. We've been in a place of neutral in, in essence, but God says, I'm trying to get you out of that so that you can move forward and do what I've had and called you to do. Do what I put my hand upon you to do. But God said, I had to bring you here to bring you out of the battle. I had to bring you here to bring you out of the warfare. I had to bring you here to bring you out of the struggle. I had to bring you here. Oh, Jesus. And this is the thing that I need you to do this weekend. I really do. I need you to leave whatever you left at home at home. That's right. Ask your roommates to help you if you can. Ask, that's why you got sick. Ask your roommates to help you. I hope you guys still. But ask your roommates to help you. Because this is a time where God says, I came to replenish you. But if you're still trying to put your hands in whatever's going on at home, you will miss what God's trying to do for you here in this atmosphere. God said, leave home at home. I got that. And guess what? By the time you get back, you're going to see that there's a shift. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him. With whatever you need. Because he brought you here to make a difference in your life. He brought you here to shift you. And some of us, we've been wondering, well, God, when is it going to be my turn? When is it going to be my time? When am I going to get what you said? When, when is what, what you declared is going to happen? It's going to happen. It's going to happen while you sleep. That's right. 